Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about tips and tricks for charging the EB70 and the EB55. Now in my normal reviews, I covered all the default charging methods, but in this video, we're gonna see if we can boost the power a little bit more to get the most out of charging these batteries on the go. Let's go ahead and just jump right into it. So both the EB70 and the EB55 support three charging methods. The first way to charge it is using this 12 volt socket cable while you're in your vehicle, while the engine's running or off another battery. The next way to charge it is using this solar adapter cable so you can plug solar panels into each of these batteries. The third way to charge is using the AC to DC adapter and that's the fastest way to charge it out of the box. Now in order to get more charge power into these batteries we have to know the limitations. Both of these have built-in MPPT charge controllers and they have the limitations on the front of the unit. Let's go ahead and look at those so we understand how to get the max power into each of these batteries. Okay, so looking at the EB55 on the front, we're gonna be focusing on this DC input here. You can see the range is 12 to 28 volts and an eight amp limit. Now this is the same on the EB70. Let's talk about what this means. So the basic equation for electricity is volts times amps equals watts. So what we're gonna do is gonna charge my EB70 using my EB55, and it's gonna give us a baseline of 12 volt charging limits and see what we can change to get more power into these batteries. So I have my 12 volt socket come from my EB55 to my EB70 and it's charging it up at 100 watts. Let's go ahead and take a look at this watt meter to see what the results are. Okay, so just remember it's volts times amps equals watts and we're getting 12.79 volts at 7.6 amps and it's getting us 97 watts. So the only way to get more wattage in is either by raising up the amperage or raising up the voltage. Now just remember the EB series has an eight amp limit, so we don't have much leeway to raise this up at all. So the only option is to raise up the voltage. Now remember the EB series has a 12 to 28 voltage range. So as long as we don't go above 28 volts, it should be fine. So let's show you the trick to get more voltage into this battery so you can charge at a faster rate. So right here, I have a DC to DC converter. It takes 12 volts input and it'll put out 24 volts at 10 amps max. So basically, as long as you put in 12 volts, it'll put out 24 volts. Let's go ahead and show you how this works. Okay, so now we're getting 190 watts versus before we were seeing 100 watts. So we're pulling 12 volts from this battery, putting it through the converter, stepping it up to 24 volts and putting it into the battery. Let's go ahead and take a look at this meter real quick. Okay, so remember it's volts times amps equals wattage. So we're still at that same 7.6 amp limit. We can't really get over that, but we raised up the voltage. So that gives us a lot more wattage into the battery. Okay, so I have this on my EB55 and we're getting the same power input. So this definitely works for both the EB55 and the EB70. If you're interested in this part, I'll have it in the video description down below. But why would you wanna use this and when would you choose to use this over solar? I always recommend somebody use solar when possible, but when the sun's not shining, it's super cloudy and you need to charge your battery up, DC to DC charging is one way to do it and the AC adapter is the other way. But sometimes AC power is not available, so DC charging is your only option. The problem with DC charging is it only charges at 100 watts and that's gonna take forever on this battery and even longer on the EB70. So if you have a way to boost that wattage up, you can charge these batteries faster and so that's where this comes in handy. So let's move on to the next method of charging if you're out on the go or if solar is not available, and that's by using a 12 volt inverter. Now this inverter came with a 12 volt socket, but I cut it and put Anderson power pole in between. So now I can hook it to this battery or use it in my vehicle. This is the best tech 300 watt pure sine wave inverter. It has two USB ports and two power outlets and it supports 300 watts. Now what's nice is I'll just go ahead and unplug this connector and then I'll put it in on this side. Once it's powered up we're going to go ahead and turn the power switch on and that's going to power up this AC to DC charger and then we're going to see power going into the EB55. Okay so once the system's all up and running we're getting 207 watts in on the battery. Now one thing to note about using an inverter like this is this is pulling over 200 watts so if you're planning to use it on a 12 volt socket in your vehicle, the socket needs to be rated at 200 watts or higher, or you're gonna blow a fuse. Now that's why I remove this and I put Anderson power pole, because in the back of my 4Runner, I have Anderson power pole directly connected to the battery 
or I can hook it to this battery, which can also support 200 watts. So I won't blow any fuses using those two options. So you'll wanna make sure that you think about it, make sure your vehicle can either support 200 watts through a 12 volt socket, or you have a different way to connect directly to your battery. Okay, well that sums up the tips and tricks for charging both these batteries. Hopefully you guys found that information helpful. Now there's one more thing that I gotta do because I promised in my EB55 review that I would verify that this could actually charge at 400 watts input. So let's go ahead and see how we can get 400 watts in the EB55. Okay, so I went out and purchased this 24 volt 15 amp power supply and it has an XT60 connector, so it's gonna go in the XT60. And then I have this stock charger and that'll go in the eight millimeter connector. So let's go ahead and plug these both in and see what power we get on the battery. Okay, so 398 watts, that's pretty decent, 399. Wow, this is gonna charge so fast. 400 watts, so there you have it guys. By using a 24 volt, power supply and the stock charger, you can get 400 watts into this battery. That is awesome. So I wanted to just show you as a proof of concept that you can use a 24 volt power supply to get extra power into the EB55. Now, if you're not comfortable with electronics, please do not do something like this. There's live 120 volts coming from the wall outlet here on these exposed pins, and you could easily electrocute yourself or damage something, catch something on fire by incorrectly installing these. So once again, this is a warning. Do not work on this unless you're comfortable with electronics. This was just a proof of concept to show you how you can get 400 watts into the EB55. So you may have to find a different type of power supply that doesn't have exposed pins or things like that if you're not comfortable working on it. Okay, well you guys can see I went through a ton of testing, cables, adapters, power supplies, just to get all this information put together in this video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. Now, if you guys thought this was something interesting or useful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. So this video is recommended to other people on YouTube. Now, if you like this content, I'd suggest subscribing to my channel so you can see these videos in the future. Now, my hope is that after you guys have seen this video, you learned something new about the EB55 or the EB70, and now you know a faster way to charge it if solar isn't available. Thanks for watching, guys, and hopefully we'll see you in the next video.